Hi guys, welcome back to Code Switch. Let's discuss about solid principle. Solid principle help you write good quality code in some way. So let's discuss about all the five solid principles. So here we have single responsibility principle, open close principle, list of substitution principle, interface segregation principle and dependency inversion principle. Now let's look at what is single responsibility principle. So the definition says a class should have one and only one reason to change meaning that a class should have only one job now have a look at the underlying code a class should have only one job what does that mean let's take an example right so we have an example we need to create an invoice then we need to send a mail then we need to delete the invoice and then we need to send the mail again to understand it better let's have a look at this so first step we need to create an invoice then we need to send a mail then we need to delete the invoice then we need to send the mail again now how a bad programmer will write this code he will create a class called invoice then he will create a function create invoice then he will create a function send mail and then he will create a function delete invoice so he will think that so the first step we can call the create invoice the second step we can call the send mail the third step we can call the delete invoice and the fourth step we can again call the send mail function now what's wrong in this the wrong here if you look at here the invoice the class name is invoice and the invoice is dealing with invoices and mail right send mail is not something that is related to invoice only create invoice and delete invoice are something related to invoice so how a good programmer will write this he will write like this he will separate out the send mail function and put it into a separate class email class so that means invoice class only deals with create invoice and delete invoice email class deals with mail related things like send mail and if you look at the single responsibility principle again this satisfies the single responsibility principle a class should have one and only one reason to change meaning that a class should have only one job here the invoice class only job is to manage the invoice email class only manage the email okay now let's look at the second principle open close principle now what it says it says a class should be open for extension but closed for modification now let's look at the underlying code open for extension closed for modification what does that mean let's take an example so imagine we have a bank that has savings account and fixed account and we need to write a function to calculate the interest so let's get more into it we have a bank that supports savings account and fixed account we need to write a function to calculate the interest now how a bad programmer will write this he will create like this he create a class savings and fixed account then he will create a function inside that to find the interest and it we can pass an account type to it so if the account type is savings he will return 3 percentage interest if the account type is fixed he will return he will return 6 percentage interest now what's wrong with this if you read the open close principle again you know that a class should be open for extension close for modification if one year later the bank decides we can create a new kind of account for the children that has 4 percentage interest this code need to be edited or modified that's against the open close principle so how can we achieve the same so so a good programmer will first create an interface i account that contains the find interest method just an interface that declares a method find interface then he will create a separate class for savings account and implement this interface so that the savings account will contain the find interest and it will return 3 then he will create another class that is fixed account and implement the same interface i account so it will also get the find interest function and it can return 6 now again if the if the bank decides to create a children account it can simply initialize a new class child child account and it can implement this i account interface on this function it can return for here we are not modified the savings account class or fixed account class we but we extended it right so if later in one year after if the bank creates another kind of account we do not need to touch the savings account fixed account or child account so this is what open close principle states now let's look at the list of substitution right so what it says so the list of substitution states that the objects of a superclass shall be replaceable with objects of its subclass without breaking the application let's look at the underlying code superclass shall be replaced with objects of its subclass 
let's take an example right so here i have a base class fruit it's any fruit and that contains an abstract method get color so whoever is inherited from this fruit will get this method get color right now i created another class apple and that is inherited from the fruit so fruit is the base class apple is the subclass and since the method get color is abstract i can override it and i can return red because apple is red i create another one banana that inherits from the fruit and the get color function returns an yellow now if i want to initialize either apple or banana or the fruit i can do like this if i initialize the fruit i can assign an instance of a subclass with the fruit Be because the get color is an abstract method in the fruit that's also there in banana because it's an inherited class so i can simply use the same variable fruit in order to call the get color method this is what lisk of substitution principle states now let's look at interface segregation principle what it says it says no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use let's read it again no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use now let's understand it with an example here i have two animals dog and tiger and we have a requirement like we have a dog and tiger we have to feed them and we may pet and they may roar so there are three items need to consider we have three functions feed pet and roar among these two animals now how a bad programmer will write this he will first create an interface i animal he will put every method to that feed pet and roar then he will create a class for the dog he implement that interface now this dog get feed pet and roar now he will create another class for tiger and he will implement that interface so tiger also will get feed pet and roar now what's wrong with this now if you read the interface segregation principle again you know that no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use here the dog will not roar and the tiger cannot be pet right so these two methods are not applicable to dog or tiger now a good pro how a good programmer will analyze this he knows that both the dog and tiger need to be fed but only dog need to be pet and tiger will roar right so he will create three interfaces i animal that contains the feed then i dog that specific to dog i tiger that specific to tiger then he will implement a dog class with these two interfaces i dog and i animal so the dog will get feed and pet and he will create another class for tiger that will get i tiger and i animal so he will get feed and roar so this is how a good programmer will write now let's look at the last solid principle that's the dependency inversion now let's understand what dependency inversion means so the dependency inversion means high level modules should be should not depend on low level modules but both should depend on abstractions and abstraction should not depend on details but details should depend upon abstractions now let's see what it means it means the high level modules should not directly depend with the low level modules instead they need to depend on abstract interfaces or abstractions or abstract contracts because high level modules should not directly code anything on the low level modules it need to take the abstract way in order to call something that means let's take an example so here we have a project and there are developers and qa is working on that project so a project is a high level module and developers and qa are low level modules now imagine a developer have a function develop and a qa has a function test and in the high level module we are going to use these because these are utility classes so on the high level module normally we create an instance of a developer we create an instance of a qa then we will call the dev dot develop function qa dot test function this is wrong based on this principle why because we are directly connecting the low level modules with the high level modules instead we need to depend upon abstractions abstractions or interfaces right now interface is actually a contract now if you look at how a good programmer will write this he will create first an interface i worker and that contains a method do work maybe any worker can do a work right then he will create a class called qa and he will extend the i work so the qa will implement the do work method and it will put its own custom testing function inside the do work now he will create another class that is a developer again he extended i worker 
so the uh, developer class will implement the do work and we will put the developing functions inside the do work now both the queue and developer has implemented i worker and so both will contain do work function right now on the main function we can get an instance of the i worker instead of getting an instead of qa or developer once we get it likewise so there are lot of ways we can get an instance of i worker we can use the dependency injection or we can get it from a service or whatever way your program is structured but the main point is we should not depend on concrete implementation we depend on the interface here dev and qa variables in the project are interfaces not concrete implementations of those two classes then we call the do work method so when you call dev dot do work it will excite the do work method on the developer class if you call the qa dot do work it will excite the do work method on the qa class so this is what solid principles thanks so much